see here the next part of the discussion in this chapter uh, is that is baking soda to take baking soda that is chemical formula chemical formula of baking soda sodium bicarbonate sodium bicarbonate so here in the preparation of baking soda we are taking sodium chloride is treated with carbon dioxide sodium chloride treated with carbon dioxide water and it is mixed with the sufficient amount of ammonia it gives sodium bicarbonate and ammonium chloride so this sodium bicarbonate there is obtained product here it is sodium bicarbonate sodium bicarbonate now take this sodium bicarbonate this sodium bicarbonate upon heating upon heating it disproportionates and it is going to give sodium carbonate sodium carbonate plus carbon dioxide plus h2o it gives then here we balance the equation take two moles sodium bicarbonate solid sodium carbonate solid carbon dioxide gas and water liquid this is actually we call this as baking soda we call this as baking soda because this carbon dioxide which is obtained okay when it is added to the baked food is it it results in the swelling swelling of bread the swelling of bread is because of injection of the carbon dioxide into the compressed carbon dioxide into the food that is bread so the size of the bread the volume of the bread appears to look larger because of the uh, involvement of the carbon dioxide in the food stuff whatever we are going to take so this is one of the important uh, reaction which you have to keep it in your mind for the chemical property of baking soda so this baking soda if you take actually this baking soda sodium bicarbonate is solid when you are putting in water soluble it forms nahco3 nahco3 aqueous and it gives three different types of ions it gives one na plus ion it gives one h plus ion and it also gives one carbonate ion and yes na plus ion aqueous the important applications of sodium commercial uses and the commercial applications of the sodium bicarbonate that is baking soda that is uses uses of nahco3 it is commonly used as fire extinguisher fire extinguisher to put off the fire fire extinguisher is used to put off the fire and it also acts as an antacid antacid Uh, to minimize the it is acting as an antacid to minimize the acidity in the stomach because it goes and nullifies it goes and neutralizes the excess amount of acid which is secreted by gastric juice in the stomach so antacid minimizes the acidity in the stomach fire extinguisher it is used to put off the fire taking place at the fireplace in the closed halls or uh, godowns or whatever the next part of this question here is that is plaster of paris before going to the plaster of paris always the salts in general salts they are in the crystalline form when they are in the crystalline form they are also in the hydrated form they are also in the hydrated form if they are hydrated then you can take some examples that is copper sulfate 5h2o This is copper sulfate pentahydrate. Copper sulfate pentahydrate, also called blue vitriol. Vitriol. Then calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate two H two O. Calcium sulfate two H two O. This is calcium sulfate dihydrate. Calcium sulfate dihydrate. Na two S O four ten H two O. This is decahydrate. This decahydrate. So here, particularly for plaster of Paris, we need uh, calcium sulfate dihydrate is a salt we actually require for preparing plaster of Paris. So if you take this plaster of Paris, actually we can prepare the plaster of Paris from 
the calcium sulfate deca calcium sulfate dihydrate you can prepare the plaster of paris from calcium sulfate dihydrate if you go for plaster of paris actually pop pop means plaster of paris this plaster of paris chemical composition is cso4 dot half h2o also called hemihydrate we are calling it as hemihydrate because it has only half mole of water calcium sulfate half mole of water we call it as plaster of paris or you can sometimes you can simply say calcium sulfate hemihydrate is plaster of paris so how do you prepare plaster of paris we prepare plaster of paris again taking the raw material that is uh, calcium sulfate dihydrate calcium sulfate dihydrate is also called as gypsum we also call it as gypsum so the basic raw material which we require for preparing plaster of paris is gypsum the gypsum chemical composition chemical composition is calcium sulfate dihydrate so now we'll go and study the necessary chemical reaction where we can prepare the plaster of paris from the calcium sulfate dihydrate in the form of gypsum so if you go for the preparation of plaster of paris calcium sulfate dihydrate that is gypsum upon heating to a temperature of that is less than 120 degrees centigrade heating heating out of two water molecules it will lose only it will lose one and a half water molecule and it, half of the water molecule is retained by it calcium sulfate half water plus 3 by 2 of h2o liquid this is solid this is calcium sulfate calcium sulfate hemihydrate calcium sulfate hemihydrate also called as plaster of paris pop but on the other hand if you take if you take calcium sulfate calcium sulfate 2 h2o if you heat to a temperature of if you are heating it to a temperature of greater than 200 degrees centigrade then you get calcium sulfate plus 2H2O. This is in the crystalline form. Crystalline form. This is in the anhydrous form. Removal of completely all the water molecules present in the salt will make the salt to convert from crystalline salt to anhydrous salt. One beautiful example where you can understand the difference between crystalline salt and anhydrous salt is if you take copper sulfate. 5H2O, the copper sulfate is bluish crystalline salt, but when you heat it, when you're heating, all the five water molecules are lost. You get five moles of water, they are lost, and this copper sulfate becomes colorless, colorless, and it becomes anhydrous. Again, when you reverse this reaction, copper sulfate anhydrous copper sulfate anhydrous again when you add five molecules of water and when you subject it to crystallization crystallization is cooling at low temperature again you get back copper sulfate 5h2o you get the bluish crystals